Tiny Triumph Shop. Tiny Triumph Shop. Hey folks, just wanted to check in with uh, a quick cell phone video today. As you can see, I'm doing some major wrenching on the T120, and uh, if you saw my previous video, you saw that I picked up a cross pipe from uh, Tech Bike Parts, and I'm installing that today. Anyways, uh, I didn't film the first part of this, and I'm only filming this on the cell phone today to just try to save some people some angst. Look, I, I don't know what your setup is. If you're running a T100 or Street Twin or Street Scrambler, uh, Tech has a good video on how to do the install for that bike. But as far as I can tell, nobody has a good video for uh, a T120. And I'm certainly not going to be the first person to make one because this is a job. I mean, this is a proper job. Uh, you can see I basically have the Bonneville um, stripped down of all of the exhaust components. I mean, everything's off, and it has to come off. It just it has to come off to be able to get the cross pipe in, and uh, more importantly, to be able to get the cat out. So just real quick, um, you're going to undo the uh, rear cans. Ding! You're going to undo um, the sort of like the mid pipe that runs, I'm gonna show my foot here, the mid pipe that runs here to the cat. Ding. You're gonna undo the header pipe. Ding. Which uh, on the T120 versus like the Street Twin or uh, the T100, this, this pipe is like, it's double walled. It's not just a shroud. So it's a little bit different from that setup. But of course you're gonna do this on both sides. And uh, I hate to break it to you, but it's absolutely true. You have to take this side of the frame off. You have to, period. There is no getting that cat out without taking this part of the frame loose right here. Now, that means that you've got some bolts to deal with. Uh, you've got the two back here that you can just see. Ding! And these are fairly easy to get to. You just move the kickstand out of the way. Uh, but then you've got this engine bolt right here. Ding! And that is an SOB. And unfortunately, you've got another bolt up here. Ding. And you can see I've taken the tank off of its mount just to be able to get to this damn thing. So, I mean, this, this is a proper job. Now, I, I still need to loosen this a bit to get some more play on uh, the frame here. So this can move in and out so I can actually get the cat out. But it's really close at this point. And I think... <laughs> I think you actually, uh, and I've, I've done it here, but you, you actually need to loosen the bolt on uh, the radiator up here at the top. Ding! This is, this is slightly shifted up. It actually mounts a little bit lower down because, uh, and I don't think I'm going to be able to get the camera in time. I apologize. But the radiator sits on two mounts that um, it sort of straddles these frame bars on either side. So you need to pull the radiator up and off of those posts to be able to wiggle this frame mount loose. Uh, but I just, I, I, I hate to break it to you, there is no escaping the reality that you, you have to, you have to loosen up this frame to get the cat in and, uh, or to get the cat out and to put the X pipe, the cross pipe in, it has to happen. So uh, I thought I'd share this just to uh, maybe relieve some angst and um, answer, I guess, a couple of questions. Yeah, you gotta do the frame. Two, you can do this with a uh, center stand, which is great for T120 owners because I'm pretty sure that's stock. Um, there's no issue with the bike falling. Obviously, when you're cranking on these high-torqued bolts, you need to be careful that the bike doesn't come forward on you, etc. So just use your head when you're doing the work. Uh, you'll need a serious wrench for this guy. This is on, I think, um, God, don't quote me on it. I think it's like... 80 newton meters it's on tight it's really tight you cannot you cannot well at least i couldn't crack this with a smaller um like hand wrench i ended up using this i bought this big torque wrench and it's got so much leverage it's fine um so just be aware of sort of the tools that you'll need and and these these torx bits uh for this engine mount this is it's a big torx it's like uh what do we see here 55 so you know just be mindful of what you're going to need to actually do this job if you're going to do it. Anyways, I'm going to get back to it. Uh, hopefully get this cross pipe on today and fire uh, the Bonnie up and see how it sounds. Well, folks, uh, there it is. Finally got that damn thing off. 
Oh my god, what a total pain in the ass. Uh, as you can see, I managed to get this off, uh, which is the mounting uh, hardware for the cat, also the uh, cross pipe. I managed to actually get these bolts out while this was under the bike, and um, you can see there's three holes where bolts go up into the engine casing. And uh, don't ask me how I did it while this was all under the bike. I couldn't tell you very carefully. I, I really, 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 really wanted to try to get this out without pulling the frame apart. But uh, that just didn't happen. So either way, it's out. Uh, I'm going to get the uh, this mounted back under the bike first. And then push the uh, cross pipe in and get it all buttoned up. So I completed that install about two weeks ago, and since that time, I've put quite a few miles on the Bonneville. Begs the question, is removing the cat even worth it? Essentially, there are four key benefits for removing a catalytic converter and installing a cross pipe. One is weight savings. Two is better fueling. Three is increased performance. And four is better sound. Now obviously the catalytic converter is much heavier than the cross pipe that you get from any manufacturer. But let's be real, the weight savings there is marginal and I don't plan on taking my T120 to any track days. Secondly, performance. Mm, maybe, but to be honest it's been very difficult for me to tell if there's been any performance increase on the bike at all. Third, fueling. Now, if you've seen my previous video, you saw that I did get marginally better fueling with the bike, but only after I actually did the ECU reset option, which I believe is probably the preferred method of installation for a cross pipe anyways. That leaves only four, the sound. Does the bike sound better with a cross pipe versus the catalytic converter? Better is a subjective term. I will say that the bike is perhaps more mechanical sounding now that I have the cross pipe in and it is a bit louder at least to my ear. Does it sound better to me? Yeah, it does sound a little better to me. All things considered, it's difficult to recommend an install like this. The job was pretty difficult and it ate a ton of time that you didn't see on camera. In my next video, I'm going to install the booster plug that I've talked about in a previous video. Now, as of the time that I'm filming this, I've actually already completed that and I've been riding the Bonneville with that booster plug. And let me say at this time, I'm actually very impressed with that product. And it's done more to sort out the throttling issues that I've had with the Bonneville than anything else. Hopefully I'll be posting that video soon, so stay tuned. Now, if you've already installed a cross pipe on your bike, share your experience below. Did you get the results you expected or are they more in line with what I'm presenting here? Tiny Triumph Shop. Tiny Triumph Shop.